Hello, and welcome to Stasis Pod, the Beast Wars podcast. I'm Rob. I'm Jen. I'm Alex. And I'm David. And today we return to uh, the universe, or what's left of it, in optimal situation. It's the How is that t- universe doing? <laughs> uh, slightly better than when we left it, in that it has not been destroyed. Good. At least not yet, because you know we got we got 22 minutes to find out what happens to it. Yeah. And I think is it safe to say that this is possibly the most anticipated piece of Transformers fiction ever released, at least by the fandom. It's it's definitely I would say it's it's easily up there with with any particularly good more than meets the eye cliffhanger. Yes. I mean, yeah, some of those get pretty hardcore, but yeah, it's yeah, up but there. The wait of the the wait isn't as long. This was months. Yeah, I put yeah. this top three with maybe the best more than meets the eye cliffhanger and the movie. Maybe the f- yeah, 2007. Like, yeah. Uh, well, okay, th- there's something that might get close, but it hasn't gotten there yet. The the next issue of Sins of the Wreckers. Because uh, mm. issue four has been delayed because Nick Roche had uh, someone in his family was sick or died or something. Yeah. Sort of family issue. Yeah. Yes. So, and, you know, after the agenda, this can't help but be a bit of a letdown. Yeah, because it guess. has to fix it's, what was broke irreparably. Right, you know, you know we, we had a lot of fun playing with our, you know, playing with our Beast Wars figures, left them all over the carpet. <laughs> but, you know, it's over, you got to put them back in the box. Yep. Get all those yeah, missiles, it's... put all those bits of Wasp Mater back together. Yeah, there's a little of that. I mean, there's that's that's the thing is after the last one, I mean, it looked like half the probably more than half the cast looked to be dead. Yes. In addition to the entire universe no longer existing. Yeah. Anyway, it starts, ooh, we get a new opening, kind of. Well, it's the same thing. There's there's some new stuff in there. We see some stuff that kind of spoils what's happening in this episode. Yeah, a little. Yeah, yeah. Uh, big spoilers. Uh-huh. Although, uh-huh. Spoilers again. I mean, spoilers if you haven't been inside a Toys R Us recently yeah. in 1998. Yeah. It, it does look really nice, though. Yeah. Oh, yes. Yeah, it's well, a, it's a great don't... new opening sequence. They grabbed some amazing clips from... Uh, the agenda, especially, and they kept the uh, Megatron transmetal dinosaur roar, which is awesome. Yes. Yes. Like half of it, I think, is from Agenda Part Three, and the other half is spoiler e. Yeah, there's some stuff from this episode, some from the next couple of episodes. Yeah, it's only really a spoil that oh, Optimus Primal gets a new body, and there's, uh, there's another big, guy coming. There's this great big and, orange primally looking guy, and some kind of manta ray. And a submarine. Then we're going to get yes. some cool yes. underwater scenes. Yes. Once they figured out how to do water, they were all about doing the water. Oh, yeah. We're making up for lost time. Yes. So, yeah, as we open up, this t- the time storm is destroying reality. Maximals are fading out of existence. And Megatron notes that I, Megatron, have triumphed. Because, you know, beginning of the season, maybe you don't know who this guy is. Yeah, recap, uh, I, Megatron is awesome. I am kind of curious. I mean, it's not like this is the first thing that they've done that has changed things in some way. So is it just the scale that's causing this, like, reality storm? Apparently, yes. He's like a I mean, focal he, point in time. He blew up the, the top of that mountain, and, you know, maybe some stuff was going to happen on that mountain. Well, yeah, yeah but... The the thing is, anything they've done previously hasn't messed with their own time stream directly. I guess if there's yeah. like the uh, how how do they know that some of those proto humans that Megatron killed weren't going to end up being the ancestors of some of the humans who helped the Autobots later? Maybe those guys were going to get eaten by a saber tooth tiger like in a week. I guess you just got true. really unlucky. That's the thing with causality. Someone else could grow up to f- fill the place. Maybe it's not a Witwicky now. Maybe it's a his name is Shia LaBeouf or something. 
some <laughs> fulfilled role, but it's uh, hard to actual fill cannibal role. Shia LaBeouf. Yeah. <laughs> yes, actual oh my God. favorite actual cannibal Shia LaBeouf helping out the Autobots. <laughs> That's serious. <laughs> See, anyway, but but yeah, Optimus Prime is really important. So yeah. many things center around him. And there are no Autobots around at that time who could fill the place. Megatron would kill them, and no. the battles would go very differently. I mean, who's taking okay. over? Ironhide? Prowl? Prowl would try. Well, maybe not G1 Prowl. G1 Prowl is kind of different. I mean, he's just kind of Duke from G.I. Joe. Yeah, yeah. except without the rank. <laughs> yeah. And without the being okay. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, after after his movie, he's not going to be okay. Don't worry, all of his internal organs are on fire, but he's just going into a coma. Yeah. <laughs> Poor Prowl. There's Poor actual evil. fire coming out of his eyeballs. It's a real bad coma. <laughs> <laughs> so, okay, I will concede that, you know, Optimus Prime is of significant importance to cause an actual time storm, whereas the top of that mountain or all those proto-humans were not. Yes, unfortunately, due to the destruction of that mountain, uh, Sundance now takes place in uh, Dayton, Ohio. <laughs> That's where yeah. we're going to have to get all of our uh, our quirky indie films. Oh, I guess I could I could tolerate that. Yeah, and unfortunately, it's also uh, George Clooney setting it up instead of Robert Redford. No! Uh, <sighs> You know, I'm kind of looking forward to Hail Caesar. If only because they finally found a movie where it's appropriate for him to have that Julius Caesar haircut that he always has. Oh, <laughs> Good point, good point. Anyway, so, yeah, Megatron's gloating, but Black Ragnia uh, remembers that, oh, right, she was a maximum protoform, and this would be super bad for her. I uh, uses her super codes, or, you know, her, her arc cheat codes, to turn the security system back on. That's also an added problem, because the only way Megatron got in there in the first place was because the code was in her head, but if she doesn't exist anymore, he can't get in. It's time wibbly wobbly timey-wimey. Yeah. It's very timey-wimey. And he gets flung bodily out of the Ark, and a rock falls on him. Because <laughs> it's a Beast Wars. Yeah. That, yep. Has a rock fallen on Megatron before? Uh, I don't believe so. Rocks fall Maybe on Maybe like Megatron a rock dies. slide or something. Yeah, because there there was the fart incident, but I don't. Well, he was on that mountain that blew up. Oh, in right. the pilot. Uh, yeah, it probably involved rocks falling on him. He's been blown up, but I think this is the first time we've seen him get tarantulas. Yeah, this is this is straight up tarantulas <laughs> rock fall. Yeah, it's pretty great. So even though Megatron is no longer an immediate threat, uh, Optimus Prime's head is still. It looks like a chewed caramel. <laughs> oh. <laughs> Gloriously gruesome. They did a good job. Yeah, it's oh. brutal. There's oh, smoke man. coming out of it. You see bits of something underneath, which is always the great question. What does he have under there? We don't want to know. It doesn't look good. Yeah, it's, it's, it's usually either like a stuff. skull face or it's like a drive through takeout speaker. Yeah. <laughs> Here it's just mechanical stuff. Yeah. And so they, they hook him up to the life support system, which is kind of a neat... Autobot symbol shaped thing that hooks up to the oh, Autobot it's... symbol on his arm. Yeah, it's an auto drive. Yeah, yeah it's your lock system. That's real cool. Hey, to be that that would be a very good safeguard against having the Decepticons using your life support stuff. <laughs> That's true. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, they've they've oh, got him. J- sort just of... imagine getting an adapter. If you go to Europe, you have to get the G two symbol. Oh, that's good. Oh. <laughs> Oh man! If you go to Brazil, you have to get like the Optimus and Malignus symbols. Oh, a Malignus converter. Oh, and that's I'm gonna need it. Voltage. Oh, geez, this doesn't even take the same voltage. Yeah, it's a pain. So yeah, the the other Maximals get there. Uh, we get a truly tasteless rat trap joke. He gets immediately yeah. smacked for it, and he deserved it. But it was a good joke. Oh, yes, it's, uh... <laughs> yeah, it's it's the best worst pun they've done. But he, Rhinox slaps him for it. It's good. Yeah, Primal says, well, well, that's just Prime. And Retro says, oh, well, well, what's left of him anyway? <laughs> and then he gets smacked. Good. So uh, good. Not Damn the it. time, Rat Trap. Not the time. <laughs> yeah, this just episode... Have one last wisecrack in before he faded from reality. Yeah. This episode does start with a lot of Maximals being flown around. or Well, Maximals and Black Arachnia. 
I mean, there are only two guys who can fly, so somebody is riding that monkey hoverboard. Three. Yeah. When, when Silverbolt oh, picks Silver up Black okay. Arachnia, yeah, which, which is okay. kind of cute. Just carrying yes. her around to manipulate the controls. Yes. It, it is really neat watching the Itty Bitty Maximals interacting with everything on the arc. Yes. I, I like that yeah, a lot. Mm-hmm. So yeah, they are, everybody is still fading from reality, and unfortunately, it is not an option for uh, Primal to make sure that uh, Optimus Prime uh, meets his high school girlfriend. <laughs> So it's, it's, it's a real enchantment under the volcano situation here. Yeah. So the so they they know that his spark can't survive outside of a living body, and Optimus Primal just happens to have a living body. And a convenient – actually, no, he doesn't have that yet. I was going to say in a convenient cockpit, but that's sort of a side effect. Not yet. That, yeah. Well, he does have a lot of extra space in his monkey belly. Yeah, it seems yeah, – it turns out the- Non-contiguous space things are happening here. Yeah, it, like it doesn't look like that should be able to fit inside of that. But no, it looks really cool in the process while it's coming out. Yeah, it does. Really good effects, especially like the time storm. The lighting in that was nice, and and now with all the spark lighting is really cool. I mean, yeah. This, yeah. this season the animation is better than ever. Yeah, it's oh, very yeah. nice. And then, you know, I guess every year technology advances, and maybe they got. A little more cash from Hasbro. We can buy more RAM chips! Yay! Yay! And so Optimus Primal uh, cracks open Optimus Prime's chest and pulls out the Matrix question mark? Yeah, the, it's... Uh, oh, this is a discussion and a half. Like, yeah. Renner does say his spark has the Matrix with it. So. Yes, yes, he says... The I mean, it, it, uh, oh. Maybe that Optimus Prime's spark is merged with the Matrix, which is reasonable enough, but... Kind of, yeah. It doesn't quite look like the Matrix from the the movie. And it doesn't it's, have finger holes, but it looks no. very similar. It's very close, but... The, and yeah, it's straight up the, the whole sequence where it opens up from Transformers the movie. Yeah, oh, yeah. It, 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 like, it is not the last thing we will see that is from Transformers the movie. No, but like, wasn't didn't like one of the comics or at least one of the uh, yeah Primeval Dawn. Yeah, like, something. Yeah, I thought it, it was like a spark chamber in front of the Matrix. It was like layers, like a decoy. I that is dumb. Yeah, <laughs> that's like trying to explain how the Millennium Falcon ran the Kessel Run in Parsecs. Yeah, it just makes more sense if Prime Spark is already merged with the yeah. Matrix and Optimus Primal just has it for a loner. Yeah. And, you know, it is it is really cool to see Optimus Primal handling what is basically the Matrix. Yeah. Yep. And it's then great. blasting it into his chest like what happened with the AllSpark in the first live-action Transformers movie and then dropping the Matrix and having it fall apart. It is <laughs> weird how it's super dramatic how... Everybody's very concerned about this empty container falling. That seemed like a riff on uh, Ultra Magnus accidentally dropping it. And oh, yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, oh, so you're saying Cheetor should have grabbed it and then it briefly glowed. <laughs> yes. No! <laughs> that should never have happened. Arise, Cheetimus Primal. <laughs> yeah! <laughs> yeah well, he's, he's a good guy. A... Repaint stuff for people on the Allspark. Well, I get it. Eventually, maybe not now, Cheetor. No. Yeah, I mean that would just be horrible. Who'd want to watch a TV series where Cheetor was the leader of the Maximals? That'd be terrible. <laughs> and uh, I, I think is this the first time we see Trans Metal Primal fly in robot mode? Huh. Uh, yeah, I think so. Yeah. I, I think. I mean, it make. I, it's possible it was only added in for the scene because otherwise he'd have to sort of clamber up Primal's torso in an un- undignified fashion. <laughs> yeah, just sort of stand yeah. in his lap and reach up and smack the windows. Yeah, that <laughs> That's great. Yeah, he, he takes this into his body. Um, well, that that's and- an outtake. <laughs> yes. <laughs> well, I will note that Gary Chalk's voice acting suggests that Primal has eaten a terrible burrito. <laughs> <laughs> it, it does sound like he's he's having problems back there. Uh, 
And meanwhile, Megatron is summoning reinforcements from his fallen troops. Wasp is pulling himself together, and very implausibly, so is Inferno. Yeah, no, Inferno, you should be dead. We agreed on this. Yeah, Inferno is, I mean, he's beaten up. He's he's in bad shape, but he's not in... I mean, I, I, do, I did notice later... When when he when they actually you know get there, you can see like when he's standing with Megatron behind him, you can see parts of Megatron through his head. Yeah, there are, oh, yeah. <laughs> there's a hole straight through his head. There's holes all over his chest. Where you could just see things behind him. I mean, it's okay. It's so I, cool he, was, he was atomized. Yeah, he's dead. I love that his blender butt is just sputtering though. <laughs> that oh, yeah. It's like a like an engine backfire. The, the effect of how he looks now is cool, but he shouldn't be there. And he, oh. on the plus side, he has gone back to saying "my queen." Oh, oh yeah, did he? Yes. That that explosion just knocked the lessons right out of him. That <laughs> uh, poor waspinator. He just looks surprised to still be alive, putting his head back on. Ah. Yeah. It seems like they've improved the uh, whole. Reflection mapping stuff for all the uh, metal effects for this season. Mm-hmm. Yeah, they seem I mean, to look a just, lot better. Yes, it looks so good. And so, yeah, Prime uh, Optimus Prime Spark turns Primal into a new toy. Ah, oh, it's Yay! but in such a way that's very body horror. Oh yeah. It's, oh yeah, it's uh, like a werewolf transformation sequence. I wonder if that's practice for anything. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, that's uh. It's it's interesting that again for the first episode of the season we get a toy episode. Yep. Just like last season. Mm-hmm. But it's really only one toy. Yeah. Yes, but, but it's, it's a big, big toy. expensive toy. <laughs> yes. He was very it's big. Biggest very biggest toy. Yep. Very it exciting. It does keep the trend of Optimus gets a new body every season. Yep. Yep. Which they mention later in the episode. Yes. yes. And uh, it, did it, I assume did everybody here have optimal Optimus? No. Yes. I only ever got the titanium version <laughs> because okay, it was like so cheap. So in that case, Jen, I have to ask you: How many times did you shoot yourself in the face with it? You know, here, here's a funny thing: I I managed not shoot myself in the face with it because I was like you know twenty, uh, okay. maybe nineteen. They they did. So when they re-released him as Primal Prime and the Optimus Prime colors. They remolded that, so there was a button to turn on the lights. Because, okay, so the story, if, if those of you who are not familiar with this, there there was this little handle that you pulled on, and you pulled it a certain amount, and the lights came on, and then you pulled it a little bit further, and the missiles shot out. So <laughs> you, you could accidentally very easily shoot yourself in the eyes. And I they did so that, uh, repeatedly. And they remolded it later. <laughs> For the re-release, to have a button to turn on the lights, and then you pulled the handle out. So a friend of mine actually managed to shoot himself in the eyes with the remolded version, because he expected the lights to come on before the missiles shot out. (laughs) So he just kept pulling it, because the lights hadn't come on yet. (laughs) So he, he shot himself in the eyes with the one that was supposed to be fixed, so you didn't shoot yourself in the eyes. Oh, that's that's a shame. <laughs> Good job, my friends. Yeah. So yeah, he's he's the new Optimus Primal. He's huge. He's got a lot of orange on him, and he's very mechanical. Yeah. And also, they're adding more reverb to Gary Chog's voice. I I'm sort of curious what part of Optimus Prime Spark gave him wings. Yeah, it's like it's like like Optimus Prime Spark is affecting him, but. Like, he doesn't look at all like Prime. I mean, he already had the flight powers, so it's just making yeah. those more so. Yeah, but he doesn't really have smokestacks. He just has giant shoulders. Oh, I mean, where are you going to put smokestacks on a gorilla? On a backpack, I guess, maybe. <laughs> I mean, I suppose if the idea is just that he's supposed to be becoming more g one that's fine. But he's really yeah, I mean, not he's... very Optimus prime yeah. No, he's a little too orange. I mean, I assume the extra orange is because he also gets super cheesy. <laughs> yeah, that's true. He he starts. It's it's like a Dreamwave comic up in here. He starts just spouting off the 
the G1 movie lines. And actually, no, he's not really doing the movie lines, but he is no, he just is, dropping he's other dropping off of prime type bio. Yeah. Yeah. So uh, at this point, uh, Megatron and Inferno get there. They attack. Primal uh, displays his toys, new features. Yes, and like uh, the deploying smokestack guns. Yep, and the pop oh. off uh, armor that was super annoying. Oh, that was oh, really Oh, that's the thing that it can actually do? That's weird. Yeah, yeah, yeah they, it's like spring loaded and they popped out. It was difficult to get them back on. Huh. I thought it was that, kind that of was. I just thought they, that was something ma- they made up to look cool for the episode, like him forming nope. Gundam shields or something. <laughs> nope, we're selling that toy hard. Oh. <laughs> and when he, uh, he uses the like laser targeting light on Megatron, that's also a thing the toy does. Yes. Oh, that's a laser. Wow. That, uh, I... I mean, it's not an actual laser. It's like a little red LED. Yeah. Oh, still. But the missiles were clear, and there was a light behind the missiles. And you can shoot yourself in the eye. <laughs> it's a cool toy. It is. It's really? really cool I, toy. I don't like the design. I mean, it's I mean, big and clunky, but I I like it. I like the toy design fine. I feel like, at least for this episode, the model's not actually very well made yet. Hmm. Yeah, like, well, because it is it more like, like G1. It, it, it's clunky and solid. Yeah, it it's clunky, but I mean more like looking at the close-ups of the face. They should have... Balanced it with more polygons there, and less polygons on like the parts of his body that aren't in most shots because he's just yeah. so damn big. He is yeah. huge, like his feet. Yeah. And uh, I also like these green eyes. I re- I yeah. really like the colors. Yeah, it's a cool color scheme, and I don't think we've seen it happen again. Let's really uh, I, just a David just a David take. Willis's shirts. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, <laughs> there's also like the the maroon bronze on his shoulders. That that's an odd. Oh yeah, it's awesome. I don't know. It he, does had, look uh, really he, he had two different colors of chrome. Yeah, yeah. It's, it's in the maroon bronze and the blue. It's, it's one too many for me. I, I don't. I don't really like. <laughs> it. I don't like it. No. Like Sorry. It. Anyway, so yeah, uh, Primal does the armor thing. He targets Megatron with his laser sight and says that they've got four million years to clean him off the walls, which is pretty neat. That's pretty, that's pretty badass. Pretty badass primal. He also kind of just goes into dad bot mode going, take it outside, take it outside. Yep. <laughs> Don't alter history, take it outside. <laughs> and also, and Meg- as is Beast Wars tradition, Megatron dubs him Optimal Optimus and calls him that twice. Yeah. It's so yeah. kind of like a minute. It's like, uh, it's Megatron's thing. Hey, you get a new mode, I have to name it. Yeah, it's, that's his his thing. That's his cut that he gets. Maybe it's, you know, it's... I, I will note that this was another Bob Forward episode, too. So it's like at the beginning of the season, Bob's just like, all right, let's pay the bills here. Get this episode yep. out of the way. Get the toy <laughs> episode out of the way. Although we're selling another toy in the next episode. Oh, I guess that's right. Yep. So, yeah, he, he drives the Predacons off. But uh, uh, Black Reckney also chooses this uh, time to escape. And when Megatron uh, destroys the cave entrance to uh, block the, the Maximals' uh, pursuit of them, he also traps Black Reckney into a bunch of rocks. Aww. And so he, he shoots her. That jerk. And yeah. length, uh, it, like a bunch of times, I guess, because she's screaming a lot. Yeah, it's... It sounds painful. Yeah. And so Silverbolt finds her. They have a very overblown conversation. Oh, my goodness. I, I, I kind of feel like at some point I need to uh, I, I need to work that dark poison of my heart line into, like, a novel or something. <laughs> Pretty great. That's yeah, just so over the top, yet such a good euphemism for love. It's so beautiful. <laughs> I also loved uh, Black Rackney calling Megatron a metal megalomaniac. Yes. <laughs> yes. Oh, and I, I did forget to mention here that uh, Optimus Primal does say, slightly before this, that freedom is the right of all sentient beings. Oh, yeah. <laughs> to which Megatron replies, then they'd better stay out of my way. <laughs> that's, that's really good. That's a really good line. We also get the uh, rat trap joke about how Optimus goes through new bodies often enough. After yeah, Cheetor right, uh, 
notices Jesus that Optimus jumping is gyros. Bodies. Yeah, sure. J- Op- jumping gyros. Optimus sure learns a new body fast. Oh, but, but what do you expect? Sure changes them often enough, and then there's an actual rim shot. Yeah, oh, yeah. that an actual drumstick. It's so that, good. It's great. I no that. It's a little too much, and it's kind of reflective of where this season is going comedy-wise. Yes. That that line, yeah. I think, broke me. <laughs> Maybe it wasn't just the line. It was the rim shot. It's like, what? Really? There's no bananas here, but it, it gets pretty good. Uh, and, and then, well, then of, yeah. you get the... the I, I would say that also just the whole scene with the... Black Rackney and Silver Bolt manages to get into that territory too, just how it wraps up. Yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah, she you know, she maintains that she's still a Predacon, but she says that, you know, for for you I'll be a maximal. And then she goes offline. And, and then, then Rhinox Silver points Bolt, out Wait, oh, first Silver Bolt yeah. does a, a howl that is or a, a no that is like I, I like to call note. the the do not want no as in the yes. yeah. <laughs> but and it terminates in a howl. Yes, it, it goes no Waru. Because he's a dog. It's got, Camille must have had so much fun recording that. Yes. Oh, yes. And then True. Rhinox points out that she just went into stasis lock. You know, I wonder, is that a slam on uh, Transmutate? That episode where Silverbolt gets super worked up about them putting somebody into stasis lock? I don't know. I don't know. Maybe he just doesn't understand. He's kind of an idiot. Guy. Oh, and Rat Trap has a good line. Yeesh, where's my cyber violin? <laughs> that so... line I liked. And yes. it's great because it's so dramatic and it really does seem like Black Arachne is probably, you know, like dying and it's terrible. And then, you know, Rhinox and Rat Trap are just there like, uh, come on, guys. Yeah, that <laughs> somehow that transition of Scott McNeil doing Silverbolt at maximum drama to Scott McNeil doing Rat Trap at maximum comedy isn't as bad as that rim shot. <laughs> just, oh, that rim shot. And he looked at the camera. Oh, yeah. Well, it's great because that's sort of, I mean, that's kind of a fourth wall thing, whereas in this case it's actually entirely in character and not fourth wall breaking. Yes. Yes, you can break the fourth wall if you're still in it's, uh, the rim shot. Uh, it's just, I, it, th- that that moment is like, oh, oh, maybe the third season's bad. What have I gotten myself into? Come on. I don't just, remember anything. Whenever you season. start to think that the third season's bad, I want you to remember the Beast Wars second movie. Uh oh, you got a good point. <laughs> and anyway, meanwhile, uh. Megatron has, you know, this is Megatron. He's always got another plan going. Mm-hmm. And in this case, it involves a bunch of Tarantulas' little flashlight bugs. Oh, yeah. There was a uh, prelude to this earlier in the episode that we kind of skipped over. There was, yeah. Oh, uh, yes. Yes, where they're pulling Tarantulas uh, back together. When and... uh, Megatron is, is basically just calling all the Predacons to get themselves back together. So yeah. we see Quick Strike's snake tail... <laughs> <laughs> snaking along and finding the rest of his body. Yep. Uh, we find all of Tarantulus's drones putting him back together, which what I guess, you know, he and Ravage were on the same, were in, in the ship, but Ravage didn't have drones to put him back together, no, so well, he's dead. And the, the drones well, knocked the, his head off a cliff. Yeah, yes! Yeah. Ravage's head yeah, is just laying too. on the edge of a cliff. The little drones are wandering around dra- dragging bits of Tarantulus together, and they just bump Ravage's head off. It's like, Goodbye, G1. Go away. <laughs> yep. And, and Rampage is in horrible, horrible shape, and you basically just have to take a moment to remember, oh, that's right, he's got an indestructible spark. Yeah, him surviving it, it makes more sense than Inferno, even though like Rampage just like falls off of a wall as if he, he looks a like a burnt grilled cheese. I was yeah, like, very wily coyote. Basically, you have to take a moment. He's I guess because he has an immortal spark, they can they could make him look believably even worse than the others and still have him survive because I mean, he's a special case. Yeah. He is yeah. immortal. He has inside him blood of kings. Yeah, when he shows up again later to do a thing, like, he's fully repaired. He looks fine. His model isn't as tore up as Inferno's, which no. 
kind of makes sense. That doesn't immortal spark equal immortal body? I mean, that didn't work for G1 Starscream. It did work for animated Starscream. Well, his body didn't seem especially immortal. It was just, you know, still moving. But, I mean, he does seem to regenerate it, so maybe it does have, like, healing powers. Maybe. And well, we know Inferno that... also, just between cuts at one point, I made a note of it, Inferno just between cuts is suddenly looking a lot better. To the point yes. where I thought it was an animation error, but it continued that way. Yeah, I mean, we know that they're, they have some sort of internal repair systems. Mm-hmm. And presumably in uh, Rampages are supercharged because he's super powerful and also immortal. Yeah. Hmm. Yeah, and uh, the Maximals at this point realize that uh, we kind of left nobody home. <laughs> no, that's where we keep all our stuff. <laughs> and so Rampage and the uh, the flashlight bugs are pull. They've all attached like ropes to the axolon, and they're are they trying to pull it in the water or are they trying to steal it? Uh, <laughs> they're, they're trying to pull it off the cliff it's on uh, across the little stone bridge. I guess I don't think. Like, are they pulling right. a Carmen San Diego here, or are they trying to pull it into the water? <laughs> in the water, they're trying to pull it into the water. Okay. I assume they were trying to pull it into the water, but you make a valid point. Yes. And so, you know, uh, Primal manages well, to cut the both. line. I mean, it oh, yeah, maybe they're going to, like, float it downstream like like uh, like log burling. <laughs> I mean, it's big and heavy. Because he goes burling down and down white water, log drivers. Uh, Some Canadian thing. No other Canadians here, huh? No. <laughs> okay. Sorry. Ah. Uh, Anyway, uh, Primal, he, you know, he turns into, he's exhibited all of his modes at this point. He used his gorilla mode to shield, uh, the arc. He used his truck mode to, as an excuse to basically say transform and roll out. <laughs> and uh, now he's in his jet mode, and, uh, Optimus Prime Spark is cutely housed within the little cockpit. <laughs> yes, so good. And so, yeah, he uses his wings to sever a bunch of the lines, and he fights Rampage, who, again, uh, Campbell Lane only getting paid for making Rampage noises this episode. No yeah, actual yeah. lines. Right. Well, wait, does a lot of the Predacons don't even... Only, I think, Megatron and Inferno have lines. Yeah, I don't think Wasmater has lines, either. No. Does Quick Strike a... make any noise? I don't, mm, I don't think so. I think we get a Tarantula's laugh. I think we do get Alec Willis doing the Tarantulas laugh at the very end of the episode. Yes. Mm. And yeah, Rampage is just making a bunch of Rampage noises. Yeah. Oh, and Rampage is surprised. Hey, somebody bigger than me. <laughs> Who is this strange <laughs> orange man? Yeah. Yeah. And while he's fighting Rampage, uh, he... Rampage fires one of his missiles at him. Right, you know, right at Optimus Prime Spark. Primal blocks it, but then it goes right into the rock that is kind of supporting the Axelon... And it goes over this cliff, it breaks in half, and it falls into the into the water. Yep. It Save us, harsh. Lose a state, spacious. No, the plant that Dinobot gave to Optimus and, and all Cheetor's stupid posters. Oh, the the and skin of the clone Dinobot. Aww, all those Rat gray traps apples. Gray apples. <laughs> that, that weird toilet they flush pterosaur out of. <laughs> so, oh, many so many good memories. The ship just breaks in half. The front end crashes down, but the back end slowly crashes into the water. They, this, it, hey, water effects! It is yeah, really cool. And they don't I think necessarily hold no, up, but it was great for the time. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, and I think it's no coincidence that this came out not long after Titanic. Uh-huh. Because this whole breaking in half sequence, it's very Titanic. Yeah. It is a bit oh. Titanic. Oh, now I wish they'd left somebody behind who played a violin. <laughs> well, Rat Trap wishes he'd had one. Yeah. 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 yeah maybe it was in his quarters. Near, far, wherever you are. I just want that over the scene of the the, the Axelon just cracking up and falling into the water. <laughs> Again, I guess I'm still the only Canadian here. Yeah, we we don't have as much affection for that song. Sorry. <laughs> kind of like it. <laughs> Near, right. far, wherever you are, so long as it's somewhere in Canada. <laughs> yeah. I don't know. I actually believe she's in Vegas these days. 
Oh, what? Like that. Goes to Vegas, stays in Vegas. Like carrots. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, it's you know the the axelon is done for, and again we get another big no from Primal. A lot of big no's in this episode. Yeah. A lot of people do not want things. <laughs> <laughs> and so they, uh, Cheetor and Primal go back to the uh, the Ark, and yeah. they I fix mean, Primal. They... This is a disaster. I mean, what are they going to do? They don't have a base anymore. It's not like they have a giant Autobot ship to stay in and conveniently just had the one Predacon who knew the codes to get into theft. Yeah. yeah I mean, a huge coincidence. It's massive. So they get back there. They fixed Optimus Prime, and they, uh, they, they there's they, this sequence where they return the spark and or the matrix to him is actually really nice. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And uh, Optimus Prime briefly awakens and uh, I guess sees what's going on. <laughs> and we you know we get Primal and Prime face to face, and it's it's kind of neat. Yeah, it's heartwarming. It's touching. It touched yeah. me. He nods as if to say, thanks, but we couldn't afford Peter Cullen. Yep. <laughs> yeah. It's like, oh, guys, I had the weirdest dream. There was this monkey wearing my face. <laughs> they, they couldn't afford Frank Welker either, and they made do. I mean, it's possible Frank Welker was just busy because he's in everything. Yeah. That's true. <laughs> but I, I like it without, and, you know, it's always nice yeah, to hear Peter Cullen, also, obviously we've heard a lot of him lately. Oh, yeah. But... Just the the whole wordless, you know, just a bit of a nod. It's it's neat. Hmm. It helps keep the uh, mystery and awe into the characters. Yes, yeah. like a like a brief encounter with the spirit of King Arthur. <laughs> and so you know, the time stream's okay, and it's time for you know we've got to live somewhere, so we're living here. So everybody, salvage what you can, including Black Arachnia, who. Is on the team, but still maintains that she's a Predacon. Yeah. It is a really great sort of sweeping shot that they do. Oh, we, we get a nice shot of what they've rebuilt. And I really like the, the setup here. Yeah. It's nice setup. yeah nice it's... little bridge. And, and it's a... feel, it wouldn't feel like Beast Wars without that section of the bridge. Yeah. Yes. And, and conveniently, a large enough chunk around the center table is missing that Optimus Primal can stand there. <laughs> Yes. Now, now two that stories he's tall. But yes, Optimus is, is like, you know, he says Maximals, and then Black Arachnia clears her throat. He's like, and Predacon. My friends, and Zoidberg. <laughs> <laughs> oh. Poor Zoidberg. Ladies, gentle bots, rat trap. <laughs> <laughs> And so, yeah, that is it for optimal. I keep wanting to call it optimal solution. It is optimal situation. I mean, it is a solution to something. That's an understandable mistake. Why is this? I actually called it that when I ripped the DVDs. I accidentally named the file that. Is optimal solution a thing that I'm missing? Well, neither optimal situation isn't a thing either. Uh, no, but it's, I don't know. It's not something I messed up when I wrote my notes. Adjective implying conclusive. Followed by solution has kind of not been a good go-to since. Uh, yeah, that's why. <laughs> oh, and yeah, I'm not sure it's the best possible situation, but it does seem like a significant improvement over the old status quo. Yes, <laughs> although we, we kind of miss our old house. <laughs> it's where they kept yeah. all their stuff. I mean, it looks like yeah. they got to keep some of their stuff, at least. Yeah, yeah no. maybe they found the plant that Dinobot gave to. Yeah. If there's anything they forgot, maybe they could build some weird uh, pedal-powered submarine to go back and get it. Yeah. Well, where was (laughs) Optimus Primal's quarters in the ship anyway? It wasn't in the front, was it? No, he had like a balcony. He had like a like a patio. I have no idea where that was. Mm -hmm. Also, was was very top of the cockpit. I mean, no point in having a patio when you live in a volcano. Not that, and he would fit on that patio anyway. (laughs) Oh. Oh, he can't fit in his little bed anymore. Aww. Aww. They're just going to have to make him sleep outside like Clifford, the big red dog. (laughs) (laughs) If he pounds on his desk, he'll probably smash it in two now. (laughs) Aw, poor guy. Now I just feel bad for Optimus. 
Oh, uh, I wonder if they sacrificed or salvaged any stasis pods, and Optimus won't fit in any. Although they have ones in the new ship, presumably. Well, new old ship. Uh, if they kept rampages, he might have fit in that one. Yeah. But anyway, yeah, it, and that uh, that is that is the episode, and you know, it, it it is a bit of a letdown from the agenda, but you know, it's it's good, it's fine. It seems. You know, it's probably not as good as I'm making it out to be, but we just watched that Beast Wars 2 movie. It was and so bad. <laughs> yeah. Basically was anything. So bad. Yeah, th- this is putting your ducks in a row in slightly better than, than the most basic formula, but... I, I thought it was enjoyable. I thought the character moments were enjoyable, and I thought yeah. that the animation looked really, really good. Oh, yes. Yeah, the character stuff was good. It seems like they've made significant improvements to their... Uh... Rendering techniques and rendering setup, which is really cool to see them pulling off. And uh, honestly, going in, you know this isn't going to be as good as the agenda because it's one of the reasons the agenda was so awesome was it broke everything. And this yeah. is them kind of uh, picking the pieces back up and super gluing them back together cleanly enough that they can have a third season. Yeah, <laughs> but they managed to fix everything in one episode. Feels... In a way, too easy, but considering it was a time storm ripping everything apart, you kind of have to wedge it together quickly before everything goes away. Falls yeah, apart. Unless you, unless you want to make this, unless you want to start your season with a three-parter, which seems like a bad idea. Uh, yeah. Not a three-parter, no. Yeah. But. And so, yeah. pulling the button on Black Arachnia defecting here actually was a clever way of handling that. Yeah, it makes yes. sense. I mean, she's basically there, not out of any particular loyalty to the maximal cause, but she likes Silverbolt, and she's really burned that last bridge with Megatron. Yeah. Yeah. She and likes she has Silverbolt very good point to... enough for them to let her stay. <laughs> yep. And also, she had a very good motivation for betraying Megatron here, which is, oh, I was built out of a maximal protoform. This is really bad for me. Yeah. yeah. And Megatron was just like, whatevs. Yep. Did you really expect me to die for your insane ambitions? Uh, yes, I'm Megatron. That's literally what, what I, I expected. <laughs> yeah, that was uh, that was in the job description. Yeah, yeah must need... die for my insane ambitions. Yeah, well, yeah, <laughs> the, the Decepticons will live on, so the Predacons will live on. Admittedly, there are only three Predacons that are, were started as Predacons. Yes, and also the. Well, the Decepticons aren't living on so much, given that the last Decepticon just had his uh, head punted off a cliff. <laughs> well, <laughs> that was the last one. They said they rebuilt. Most of them retired. A few of them got rebuilt. Okay. Yeah. yeah. There you could figure be some others there. Thundercracker's retired and is a novelist now. You know. Yeah. <laughs> Writing bad screenplays. Ah, uh, so good. Fifty Shades of Blue. <laughs> 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 yes. Except his uh, his knowledge of human uh, anatomy is so uh, off base, it just reads like uh, IKEA instructions. <laughs> I I approve of this. I approve strongly. <laughs> ah, so that is it, and uh, so please join us as we journey through uh, the rest of the season of Beast Wars, and we'll we'll be able to form stronger opinions on the season as a whole as we progress through it. It's a little more uneven than season two, uh, to say the least. Well, I think anything would be more uneven than season two. Season one was more uneven because well, yes, season two is yeah. One, season not two is quite a masterpiece, continuous yeah story, but like every part fit together just right. They kind of used every single cool piece of the story bible in the season two plot arc, and now they're kind of playing with some of the new toys they got to reveal, but literally. Yeah, literally. But yeah, they they kind of told the big story that they'd been setting up from, and this is kind of like, uh, you know, season nine of uh, Stargate, where they kind of were winging it on trying to come up with new plots for the bad guys and enough aliens for them to actually be threatened and stuff like that. Yeah. Well, it's kind of the victory lap after how awesome season two was. Yes. Yeah. yeah. And it's it's not bad. It's, you know, it's fine. It's often very good. Yeah. Sometimes it's not, and that's Feral Scream. Stay tuned. Uh, oh. <laughs> oh. That's a two-parter. Uh, oh. Look out. Yeah. Oh, no, I forgot that was a I, two-parter. I don't... I yeah. have vague memories of that. But we will return with the rest of the season. 
So until next time, you can find us all over the internet. We are on Twitter at, at @stasispod. We are on Facebook at facebook.com slash stasispod. And we're on Tumblr at stasispod.tumblr.com. And our RSS feed is hosted on iaconunderground.net, which is now hosting the Iacon Underground Radio Network. That's right. Find out all the latest Transformers news, comics discussion, and what have you. Yes, we have lots of what have you, in fact. That's, uh, I always tune in for the what have you. <laughs> we pride ourselves on it. And of course, if you'd, uh, if you prefer, you can also find us on iTunes, and uh, you can rate and review us there, and uh, we'd love to hear from you. What do you think of Season 3? I mean, we know what we think of it, but, uh, you know, obviously we'd be interested in your opinions as well. So, write in, tell us about it at uh, stasispodcast at gmail.com, and uh, we'll, uh, we'll pull letters from the old Maxim mailbag and read them on air. Indeed. Yes. So, until next time, when we go deep into deep metal. I'm Rob. I'm Jen. I'm Alex. And I'm afraid of the rim shot. I'm David. But if, sh- if there's another one? I don't oh, think it's, 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 it's getting much worse. <laughs> Oh, but, but it's getting so bad we need Jean Claude Van Damme to come in and fix it. Oh, well, on the plus side, we do get Rubber Ducky and Megatron wearing a wig. We do get Megatron. Oh, wearing a wig. I forgot about and, that. And uh, Predacons playing cards. <laughs> uh, Rat Trap playing Doom. Yes, I do remember uh, that. There he is, my, my little guy. Uh, guy. Oh yes. Okay, so there's some good parts, but. Uh... I'm worried. Uh, I don't want to get a hamster and call him Hamwise Hamgee. <laughs> and then would you have to get a uh, a gerbil to befriend him named Gerbilbo Baggins? <laughs> <laughs> oh, that would be adorable. I don't know if they get along, though.